Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I do appreciate it. I hope your day is going super well. I am in episode seven now. Episode seven of my Luminar 4 tutorial series. Hope you're having fun. Hoping you're getting a lot out of these videos. I am today uh, continuing in one of the four tools tabs or filter tabs. I've done essentials and creative. Today we're doing portraits and so let's get into it. First off, I want to uh, make a comment about the photo I did not take it. It was taken by my friend Robert Vanelli. He's a director of education over at Skyloom. He sent me um, a number of his portrait photos that he's taken to allow me to use in my tutorial videos. This is courtesy of Vanelli. Uh, he's very talented and has some great portraits and uh, I'm thankful that he allows me to use them because I don't really take a lot of portraits. Okay, so I'm zooming in big time. This is a raw file, you can see that there. I'm in the edit tab uh, across the top there and I'm on the third one down which is portrait if you hover over it. But let's get started. AI Skin Enhancer. Um, one of the innovations in this version of Luminar, Luminar 4, is this AI Skin Enhancer and as I drag it to the right, and I'm going kind of far to over accentuate what you can do. I don't recommend that you take the sliders all the way to the right and everything because you'll end up with everybody looking like a plastic doll or something. Um, Skin Enhancer, it does a lot of skin smoothing. So there's before, you can see there, a little bit more texture in her skin, and after. And then there's this AI Skin Defects Removal. And I hate to even act like that there's defects in somebody's skin, that just sounds really rude. Um, but if you notice, there are some markings. Um, I see like something on her cheek here that's been smooth, a couple things on her forehead. If you look there, there's the before. And I'll give it a second for you to look, and after. Uh, they've been smoothed off and I think look a lot better. So that is AI Skin Enhancer. Um, all of these have masking as well if you want to get into that. But I'm going to reset that and go into Portrait Enhancer. Now, another innovation in Luminar 4 is this tool, the Portrait Enhancement tool. And it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, and the amount of stuff that is available here is kind of mind-boggling. It's actually made me interesting, interested in taking portraits, as I talked about in that video. Um, and it's not my thing, right? So face light, as the name implies, it lightens up her face. Uh, red eye removal, there's no red eye here, so I can't really demonstrate that. Check out the whites of her eyes. I'm about to drag this slider. Watch how white they get. I mean, look at that. It's, it's just awesome looking. Uh, let me show you the before and after. Just stare at the whites of her eyes. There's before and there's after, right? Before and after. I mean, it, it's brilliant. It's it's literally just amazing. Um, I love that. Eye Enhancer basically crisps up the eyes a little bit. Gives them a look, kind of like what I'd call clarity. It just helps provide a little bit of definition. It, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. I'll go way to the right. If you look at her eyes, there's before and after, and I'm talking about the actual eye, not like the eyelashes or anything like that, but the actual eye, like I guess that would be the pupil and the iris, that sort of thing. So there's before and after. You can see it's a bit crisper and I don't know, I just think it looks great. Dark circles removal. Hey, I could use this. Uh, if you look at her, she doesn't really have that, but there's a little bit of shadow there. And if you look at those again, there's after, sorry, there's before and after, especially this left side of the screen, her right eye, it's got a little bit more in it. So there's before and after. Again, it does a great job and um, all this stuff, I don't know how they're able to figure that out. I've done it um, in another video where I had two people in a portrait and it recognized them. However, if the face is not prominent enough, um, it may have challenges figuring out what the face is and there, therefore the tool may not recognize it. Just uh, something to be aware of. Uh, slim face, sure, we'll do that. She doesn't need it, of course, but there you go. That's how it works. Simple and straightforward. Enlarge the eyes. You know, that works really well. Be careful with that one. Um, and that is because, uh, do you remember that Big Eyes movie a number of years ago? If you're not careful, you're going to have everybody looking like some kind of freak. Um, and it's, I think, really more so designed for someone like if they have, uh, you know, maybe they're partially squinting in the sunlight or something like that. It can help with that. Uh, which reminds me, slim face is really good. If you've ever gotten a close-up of somebody, like with an iPhone, which is kind of a wide-angle lens, or an actual wide-angle lens, it will unnaturally distort the, the size of their face and make it look wider than it is. Slim face can come in handy in those kind of uh, situations. Eyebrow improve. Yeah, you bet. Sure. If you look at her eyebrows, they just basically get darker. So there's before and after. 
Um, and honestly, this thing does a really good job of capturing eyebrows. Um, and then you get into the lips. And, 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 you know, there's saturation, redness, and darkening. That's just a game, for lack of a better word, that you play on each photo to see how it looks. There's not one that always looks great on every photo. You know, you might want more saturation, like intensity of the red, or you might want to increase the amount of red, right, like that. Or maybe you just want to darken it, or maybe you want to do some combination of all three. Um, I recommend just being careful. Teeth whitening works quite well. No teeth showing in this photo, so I can't demonstrate it. Again, this is a high-level tour. This is not a deep, a deep um, kind of um, tutorial on this, right? So next up is high key. And again, not a look that I go for, but I gotta admit, it looks pretty cool, right? So it kind of gives that, um, I'm gonna go with the word dramatic. I'm not really sure how else to describe it, but it, it, it it's a more interesting portrait to me uh, because it is a bit more dramatic. You have a number of uh, sliders here, and again, every one of them is gonna impact the image uh, or each image a little bit differently. Um, so I just recommend that you, you play around, right? That's, that's impacting blacks, but you can drop that and go really shadowy. And then you could do something like skin enhancer and go really high and make it kind of smooth. Um, and that's kind of fun. I mean, you can experiment down in the advanced settings. I had that clicked already, but it, that's what it normally looks like. If you clicked on advanced settings, you get glow. Glow is pretty cool, right? Kind of ethereal look. Um, you can do a little bit more contrast, take down the saturation. And, you know, may not be the look you're going for, but that's the original and that's the current state. It's kind of a moody, kind of fun portrait. Um, I kind of like it. Uh, but, you know, I've got a little bit of all of these filters going. Um, and then Orton does a great job of just adding shadow. I actually use Orton on like landscapes and cityscapes to add a little bit of a romantic glow. But it's over here in the portrait tab. And honestly, it looks pretty cool. I'll tell you what, let me go reset these others. So they're not just totally jacking up what you're able to tell that I'm doing with the uh, Orton filter. Okay, so those are all reset. And let me reset Orton now. So as I said, Orton does a little bit of um, shadow, but if you take a look at it, there's two types. There's type one and type two. Kind of shadowy, uh, definitely a higher contrast, a little bit more pop on the color, which is probably due to the, the, the contrast. You can reduce contrast here, as you see, which fades the image out a little bit. And uh, you do have some softness, right? Um, and then personally, I kind of like type two for portraits. It's a little bit more gentle. Um, I like type one on a lot of my cityscapes, but I think type two looks pretty good here. Um, it's just a little bit softer, a little bit less intense. Um, brightness, softness, all those kind of things you can, you can change here as well as saturation. So again, it's a customization thing. I recommend you just play around with them and uh, just come up with a portrait that you want. And even though I like Orton on my landscapes and cityscapes, I, I can see the, uh, the impact that it would have on a portrait and understand why it was put on the portrait tab. Um, although I think initially as a filter, uh, it was developed for landscape photography. But um, hey, things get co-opted for other uses. This is a great example of that. It works well here, but that's really it for portraits. That's effectively how these four tools work. It's a powerful bunch of stuff. That AI Skin Enhancer and that Portrait Enhancer, I mean, they're kind of mind-blowing. I think they're awesome. So if you haven't tried these yet, please do. Even if you're taking iPhone photos of the family or just iPhone selfies, check it out. Play with the tools, get to know them, and hope you have fun with it. And that was a high-level overview of the, uh, the Portrait tab here in Luminar 4, covering those four tools. And I'll be back more. That was episode seven. I'll be back soon with episode eight, in which case I'm going to jump into the pro tab and cover all those professional filters as well. That's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. Please do like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. See you soon. Have a great one. Take care and adios.